Welcome to Windows on the World. And we've got quite an interesting show for you tonight. It's something that I've been working towards for quite a long time and something that is personal to me. We've had a lot of success in looking into the way things have been taken over. We've done many articles and many shows on this kind of thing. We've got this new infrastructure being put in everywhere and basically the narrative is being controlled and we're going to take that one step further tonight because something has happened over the past 18 months which has shocked me and I've never come across anything quite as hostile or even organized as what's happened because it all starts with a small venue but before we go into that I want to talk about this culture of change agents we did a show many shows actually and an article called big society change agents now we go into this stuff in a lot of depth pretty much at some level every week and I'm always looking at the tactics that are used. We've been across into many areas with this, like Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals, all of this kind of subversive stuff that came out of Cameron's big society, funnily enough. So around about 2011, you got these organizations starting up, basically stating that they were going to train people in these, well, what we could call very subversive tactics. And if you want to look at the Saul Alinsky rules, we've got them on the website. You can actually look them up. This, the Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals basically came out of community organizing. And it's an, a really interesting thing because I've got uh, a lot of experience going back over the past few years with looking into this. And a friend of mine, several years ago, started telling me about basically things happening locally and people coming in that weren't known in the area and they started to organize people and they're called community organizers or change agents and they start up community interest companies etc now the thing is with this it's a very broad thing so you can't generalize about it you can't really generalize because a lot of the people involved in it are doing it for very good reasons but the problem is that they get steered by people who are trained. And we see this all over the place. We see the things like, for instance, the Delphi technique. And if you haven't heard of that, it's a way of gaining group consensus. And what that means is that you go into an organization um, and you have a facilitator and a co-facilitator. And, and they basically control the narrative. So what, what happens is... We're going to talk about, oh, how much more cycling would you like to see in the area? We're not going to talk about, we're going to get rid of all the cars and close the businesses down. We're going to say that you're going to get this. Everything's done with a benefit, you see. So they offer a benefit and then you get what you're given. And this is just the way it works. And I think most of people will be um, very aware of this because it happens in all organisations. It happens everywhere even in day-to-day -day running of, of businesses. But what we've found is there's a network of people who are working quite subversively to control the narrative in a very, very aggressive way. And when I first started to look into this, I found out that it's very scientific. We cover all this stuff in great detail. It's a very scientific agenda. It all comes out of psychological manipulation. And really, that's where it starts to link up because you've got these um, people coming in who say that they're not known in the area, uh, they're trained in the public and the private sector. So it's, it's a kind of interesting thing. So you've got organizations, say, like Unlimited, Locality, Intentionality. I think that one's changed now, Power to Change. There's loads and loads of them. And they form these umbrella organizations for training people as community organizers. And of course, this did come out of Cameron's thing, the big society and all that, in the uh, 2010, I think it all started. And you've got 
now a whole hundreds of thousands we've talked about this last week that for instance there's 550,000 people um, who've been trained into the prevent program and we might get to that a bit later on because somebody I know sent me some it's kind of funny really but he said something about natural cures in hospital and the next thing he's being observed as though he could be a domestic terrorist you see so <laughs> it's all kind of interesting stuff I'm just looking here in the chat box and I'm not sure whether I'm signed in or not um it's yes not sure whether the chat box is working actually I'll just say hello and see if I'm on there um right okay right okay yes okay I can see that yes ah everyone's in chat that's great because it's the first time that I've used the chat box really when I've not had a producer and if Tony's there hello Tony and yes everything's okay on this side of the estuary apart from that I've got a lot of stuff all over the desktop that I'm trying to get through because yes the, when we started off doing this it was very easy to start seeing how all this fit together and somebody got in touch with me from South Wales and he told me about all of these people that were coming in to the local area and the the thing is that we've got a, a, this network that just arrives and I didn't know much about this at the time and then I started looking into these organizations and it started to link up in a much much bigger way and then I got somebody sending me information about how this was happening because I knew it was happening but then I started to link up all as I say all these organizations and it became very very clear that there was an agenda that people are being trained into and most people who deal with councils or the police at certain levels or any kind of authority will know what I'm talking about here this is an organized way of basically controlling the narrative and shutting down any form of dissent now about 18 months ago, I was introduced to a small venue in North London and it was through a friend of mine and I met the lady who was running the venue and she's called Penny and we'll be hearing from her a little bit later on. Now, when I went into the venue, I was very surprised at it because it was something to do with local community it ha it was a community center but not a community center in the kind of way we think now like a community hub where it's all corporate this was like an old-fashioned sort of place which you don't see anymore you don't see these sort of places and what was great about it this lady was running it all on her own and letting people basically use the place for nothing and if the people had a bit of funding they would pay for the room everything was very cheap there the prices were not what you'd expect in this day and age certainly not like these sort of funded community centers there were nothing like that um the the actual money she was asking for was was minuscule and then they had this great venue at the back where they were putting on all these different shows and different sorts of music and it was really kind of eclectic and that's what i love about these sort of venues it's more like a sort of venue that you'd get in europe you know when you go into these places and it's it's slightly ramshackle here and there a bit eccentric and a wide group of people in there and that's something that i just hadn't seen for years so i got quite excited about the place i started talking to penny and she told me all about that it was a, a trust. It was the Tottenham War Services Institute, which was a trust that was set up. And it was for the people of Tottenham. And she'd had this tussle with it in the background and kind of been left with the trust and was running it. And it was being run exactly how it should be run. And I was incredibly impressed with it. And I started going to some gigs down there. I found out that a lot of people I knew from the music scene knew about it. It was very, very welcoming and very easygoing, not pretentious at all. And so Penny asked me if I would like to be on the trust. And I said, yeah, OK. So I went on the trust and very shortly after the things started to change. Um, someone came in to the venue and was offered room in the venue and they were allowed to do whatever they wanted they wanted to bring in some kind of non-confrontational theater or something like this it was kind of a bit vague really they they wanted to come in and do some theater and then it was found out that their 
motives were not actually being laid out onto the table and things started to get a bit strange because we got uh, start, we got some attacks on the building and it started to get quite ugly in other words people started to cause trouble in the building um it's it started off with basically we had um problems with with these people who came in and it's then it started to escalate into something much worse we started to be libeled online we were abused all sorts of things started to appear on the internet about us which weren't true and the big problem here was that we're trustees and we cannot be seen to respond to this stuff because if you're a trustee you have to be exactly within the law you can't respond and just give some sort of response because it's a public official post basically so you have to be seen to be quiet and basically keep out of the limelight and it's very very difficult when you're being attacked so what happened was it escalated and it just started to get worse and worse and worse and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to play um, an interview and basically a statement that penny put out because she's kind of described what's happened and why we have to talk about it and that's going to come up a bit later in the show but i'd like to direct you first to an article um, on windowsontheworld.net and it's called small charities and venues under threat and I'm just going to go through it. Um, so it's small organizations, trusts and charities are under threat from corporate interests and change agents working in the public and the private sector like we've just described. Now, I state in this article, I put the story out as it backs up my research, which is what, again, what I've been talking about to open the show with, into these sort of self-appointed third-party interlopers and community organizers taking over venues. Now, this story is not unique, and if you have any information out there, because as, as this show goes on, you will start to pick up some details and maybe resonate with them. Um, if you have any information or story of small charities or venues being targeted by groups of what we call change agents or subversives on behalf of third parties, do get in touch because we aim to name and shame those destroying small individual organizations. Now, this is what happened. For the past 12 months, uh, myself especially, and this lady in particular, who ran this successful community venue, which is known as Tea Chances in North London, which is actually also the the charity, the Tottenham War Services Institute, is the, the, overarm, the, the overall charity. Um, it's been subject to a vicious hate campaign by two well-funded individuals who've libeled, incited hatred, made false reports to the police and accused us of selling off the venue to a property developer. And we'll get to that a bit later. These individuals have set up websites, they've distributed leaflets, they've contacted the press and they've falsely accused the trustees of all manner of crimes. Now, what they've done is they've set up petitions to get rid of us and made all sorts of allegations that are completely untrue and this has escalated to the point now where the police have had to take action and we'll get onto that in a little while as well but basically what's what's happened is that this agitation got worse and worse these people came to the building and it was only two of them and they recruited a few more but it's mainly two and one in particular and he came into the building caused criminal damage then tried to form committees in there. They came in when there was events on, screaming that we'd all stolen money. Um, the police didn't do anything. We gave them all the information about him. In fact, on one occasion, MP David Lammy was in there and many members of the local council, people who were on the council, council employees, and they were absolutely shocked by what had happened. And we've got witness statements from them. We gave them all to the police and it escalated. There was hatred put online against us. And what I must say here, which is very important, is that when I contacted some of these websites like libcom.org, who put up very misleading articles 
which was basically saying that we were going to sell the building and we were all in with property developers we w they did not print our response um we found this there was a a post that was put onto something called the revolutionary communist group and i got in touch with their head office because they've been told a pack of lies quite recently and there's no response from them but what's very good about this now is i've put this article out outlining what's happened and lots of other websites have taken it up so thanks for that <laughs> now basically this went on for ages and the harassment never stopped they set up websites libeling us they they set up all of these petitions change.org and then they put up fundraisers for themselves as well so they even started to get money out of the public for these fake organizations now what they actually did was they impersonated the charity <coughs> excuse me they impersonated the charity by using the name of the twsi the tottenham war services institute and called themselves a steering committee so all of a sudden we've got people impersonating the charity saying they're us and trying to hold us to account for something we haven't done and it's basically taking over the building and it, it escalated and escalated got worse and worse we couldn't get the police to do anything and then the building was squatted basically they broke in and as a consequence of that we've had sixteen thousand pounds of equipment stolen um the place is still under occupation and i got in touch with the metropolitan police borough commander and he then sent our concerns over to the north london police now bearing in mind this had been going on for about a year um i found that it was rather slow really with the police they they kind of wanted to sit on the fence really i was very surprised because some of the things that were happening were very serious but let me just read to you what i sent to commander surtees who's the metropolitan police commander i said dear mr surtees i wish to bring to your attention a matter which highlights some very disturbing issues we are trustees of a small charitable trust in North London, the TWSI Tottenham War Services Institute, which runs a wide variety of, of events, catering for a wide variety of interests. It hosts, it hosts everything from rock bands to still life painting classes. In April 2017, the trust started to be attacked by a group of subversives. It soon became clear that they were trying to destroy the trust and take possession of the trust property for outside interests, which is exactly what happened. Now, this is a very important point because these two subversives were given the building to do whatever they wanted in now these are very rich people they're very privileged people and they didn't want that they wanted to set up committees in the building which is not what is allowable really because it's a trust building and penny potter will explain that a little bit later but this group then created this steering committee purporting to be the TWSI, linking legitimate TWSI information to websites that they'd created. The situ escalated, situation escalated with the trustees being threatened that if they did not resign, and this is an actual quote that was sent to my phone, an army would rise in Tottenham and take the building. So I was threatened that if I didn't resign, they were going to libel me basically all over the internet and they would raise an army in Tottenham. Well, I think there's five of them so far. But there's more people who've got on board and it's not their fault because they've been told a pack of lies so we're not blaming anybody else about this because there's only a few ringleaders there's two main ringleaders and there's a few others around them but basically the people who are using the building have no idea that it's been illegally taken over and what these people are actually up to they've probably been told that we've run off with the money which is absolute nonsense and we'll get to that a bit later so the situation escalated with the trustees being threatened that if they did not resign an army would rise in tottenham and take the building this was being instigated by two ringleaders and remember they have no support locally and they're not known in the area now the group got the trustees names from the charity commission website and started a campaign of libel threats and inciting hatred against the trustees now this is a very important point this is from my email to commander surtees of the met police by the way um the reason it's an important point is that when you're a trustee it's 
basically you're a public servant you're a public official you are there to hold the property or there basically to serve the people who are the beneficiaries of that trust which we had been doing by keeping the building open putting in the charity stuff uh, making sure that it was being used by the community for what its original purpose was which is exactly and the only thing that you have to do there are no other duties so what happened is that they p put our names onto the charity commission website and it escalated because then when the building was ransacked they found very personal information about us and have printed it everywhere absolutely everywhere so what they do is they libel you um, and say you're this you're a racist and you've taken all this money and they make up a load of lies and then they put your name and the phone and your phone number next to it and they, and they did this consistently so the chair of trustees had to move out of the area because of the death threats um, this is carrying on with what I wrote to the police. This obviously made running the venue nearly impossible, which seemed to be the aim as the trust could only operate with, with the building open and the beneficiaries engaging in the activities. Now, the building was attacked on many occasions and damage done, all sorts of allegations made to the authorities. This included the main protagonist, who we'll name a little later, piling rubbish outside the building and reporting the trust to the council. This went on and on and on. There was harassment of people at events, as I said, including the event with David Lammy and the local councillors. The group repeatedly contacted the Charity Commission, making allegations of fraud. And the Charity Commission have been absolutely no help whatsoever. And I've been on to them about this, and I'm going to play that a little bit later as well because this is a very important part of it. Now, the Charity Commission is a regulatory body. However, the Charity Commission knew we were under attack and must have known that these, this was entirely vexatious. This was vexatious action being taken to try and destroy the charity. And this happened while the charity was being absolutely attacked. We were being personally attacked. We couldn't go near the building. We were threatened. And then we've got the Charity Commission basically saying right we're going to look into this we're going to look into that we, we we're dealing with the council there was debts building up on the building and these people are basically taken over the public narrative we had no outlet to say anything because we were trustees and this is probably the most important point of the whole thing and why we've had to go public now because of what's happened how, how it's escalated so one of these subversives contacted action fraud now if you want to report fraud these days you go to this thing called action fraud and it's basically a call center so i reported them for fraudulently using the trust name and inventing names like new chances when we the penny potter the lady who started the the venue and and is the chair of trustees created this venue called tea chances tottenham chances to give people in tottenham a chance that's what it was for everybody had a chance in there and some very vulnerable people using that building there's people with mental health issues and penny helped all of them that's why i became a trustee because anybody who walked into that building was helped and it's been absolutely thrown back at and she's been abused by these people on a level that i didn't think was possible so so basically we go to action fraud and, and I, I explain that they're using the trust name, the TWSI, the Tottenham War Services Institute. They're using our name. They're, they're using um, the everything against us that they can by, by trashing our name, but by stating that they've now taken over and they're us. So basically, they take over, they take over the name and all of a sudden, it's them. And we're the criminals. So they've taken over because we're criminals. And that's exactly what happened. So so one of them has stated that we were stealing £33,000 a month. It gets passed to action fraud. right? It gets passed on to action fraud. Whereas our claim was never heard. We never heard from action fraud. Nothing, nothing of the sort. right? So if we have a look here. I've got... Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I can get this up now onto the screen because I think that this is an absolutely key point about the whole thing. So this was from City of London Police. 
to this person, Lucy Bainan, who's basically lied through her teeth and stated that we were stealing £33,000 a month. Well, it was out by £33,000. So, your report met this threshold to be reviewed further and was assessed by a crime reviewer. After conducting initial inquiries, the report was deemed suitable for dissemination in a local force for investigation. As a result of this process, your report was sent to the Metropolitan Police Service on the 21st of November 2017. The Metropolitan Police Services have sub subsequently responded with a local crime reference number. And there's a crime reference number on there. So, so we reported them... For all of these crimes that have happened include criminal damage, disruption on the premises, um, basically all of this libel that's happened online. And then they write to action fraud, make up a pack of lies, and it gets covered. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. That's the phone in the background, which I'm going to try and get rid of. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to talk about the action fraud investigation which basically that we went into Tottenham police and they've said oh yes that's been passed over to us for investigation so in other words that has been taken seriously by the police now what we've actually reported has now been taken seriously by the police but it's taken over a year and it's taken the situation actually escalating to a degree which nobody would have possibly believed so that's that part of the thing about action fraud now it's this has been the pattern that the numerous criminal offenses and assaults reported to the police that we've actually taken over there which in many many crime reports have generated crime numbers but no action whatsoever so the lack of action by the police led to the group entering and squatting the building now, the damage done was extensive and the group stole all the alcohol, smashed the doors, ripped out the CCTV cameras and we've yet to assess the amount of property that's been stolen. Up till now, it's £16,000, but we haven't been able to go in. Also, um, Penny, the chair of trustees, had two cars in there. They've been stolen. I had some property stolen, which was quite valuable, which was in the office. And the musical equipment's been taken everything's gone out of the building so basically it's a robbery so these people have gone in there and it's a burglary so the charity operates on these very small amounts of income and it's been literally destroyed we were determined to keep it going this is what i've said to this metropolitan pri uh, police officer yeah the borough commander i said the reason we're contacting you is that as trustees we have no redress whatsoever we've reported the online libel and we've spent a year fighting this the crimes of the ringleaders are known and we cannot understand why they have not been arrested we have all the evidence logged remember there's many crime numbers here um, and on the 20th of the second Justin Katko and Lucy Bain and the ringleaders of this steering committee who were impersonating the charity went to Wood Green Police Station and said that I'd made these statements about them which were completely untrue and um, so i've got this this copper on the end of the phone saying these people have come in and made a complaint about you and i said what about and then i told him about what they'd done to us and he said well you'll have to dial 101 for that so nothing again is done so these people can libel you they can go make false reports to the police like saying you're stealing thirty-three thousand pound a month and nothing happens to them and um, so basically I, I've, I've finished off my email to him with we wish to know why the police have not acted to protect trustees and failed to investigate our complaints we have a full record of the reports made and the offences committed against us can you please investigate this matter and let us know who will be taking this matter forward on your behalf so he writes back and said many thanks for your email could you please provide details of any crime reference numbers that you have and or the names of the officers dealing with this matter so that i can make contact with them to address the issues that you have raised many thanks and kind regards mike dempsey staff officer to commander surtees so i wrote back to him said thank you for your swift response i have forwarded your email 
to Miss Penny Potter, Chair of Trustees, and she will supply you with the crime numbers and officers involved. In the meantime, the building is still under illegal occupation and there has been damage and much property stolen. We have a court case this Wednesday. The previous hearing at Edmund, Edmonton County Court was adjourned and was disrupted by the intruders, the trespassers. We are attending the court tomorrow to advise that there may be further disruption and to lodge trust documents and witness statements. Now, when we did have this court case, this recent one, to get the building back... Um, I did the paperwork for it and we went in. We were abused all day. We had somebody on drugs screaming at us all day long in the court. We were there until four o'clock in the afternoon. And yes, we do have a possession order for the building. That's in the article. But the thing is that all of this libel and nonsense is out there. So... This includes a leaflet which states that there's a problem with tea chances. Up and down the Tottenham High Road, local people who once made regular use of tea chances ask us, is it open? The answer overwhelmingly is no. Our community centre, wait a minute, so all of a sudden it's their community centre. So these two radicals take it over, these rich, spoiled radicals, go in there, take it over, and then it's their community centre. Oh, I thought it was for the actual community. I didn't realise it was for two overprivileged rich kids who've come in to try and virtue signal with an ulterior motive. You know, it's absolutely incredible. Um, it says, we are tired of being excluded from a building that we know belongs to us. Well, actually, you two... You were given the building, you were given access to everything in the building, and you abused it. And it says there's an unaccountable management clique comprised of trustees and their associates colluding with property developers to turn a community centre into real estate capital. Not true. To make it easier for the building to be sold off, they have been evicting domestic and commercial tenants. Not true. This is absolute lie. There was somebody downstairs who hadn't paid the rent for over a year and damaged the property and she was told to leave. That was the only person who's ever been told that there was a problem. Now, the management system, it said here, have been systematically intimidating, firing and driving away staff, not true, um, and service users who are an essential part of the local community, including volunteers who are sharing practical knowledge in how to resist benefit, because it goes on and on and on. Absolute rubbish. Because the the people who came in and, and took over are doing exactly what they accuse us of. It's all reversal, quite interestingly. So they're saying funds are embezzled that ought to be put towards the development of community resources. So they, they just make this stuff up and they're allowed to do it. And it says, within this context, a culture with no accountability has allowed various kinds of abuse, verbal, sexual, racial. No, it hasn't. Rubbish. We had, we had some um, one come into the building who started causing a load of trouble and was stating that, oh, it's the, it's the most hostile environment I've ever been in. Oh, my God, I'm going to write to The Guardian. Absolute rubbish. Um, and basically, they're, they're stating that the property's held in trust and the legal owners of trust property are its trustees. Now, that's not true. The trustees hold the property, so these people don't even know what a trust is because a trust, as most people who listen to our show will will know most people will know what a trust is basically a trust is where you put an asset so it can be used by a third party so for instance if i have a house and i want to leave it to, to my children or to some other beneficiary i can make a trust and it can be part of that trust i can call it the windows trust and all my property will go into the windows trust which means it's not mine anymore in other words i'm not liable for it the the people who are the beneficiaries are the beneficiaries of the trust. So they don't even know the law and what a trust is. And it carries on. So they, they're going on about all this stuff that happened years ago. Um, and then they bring in this property developer. Now, what actually happened was that the the building was in, in dis, a bit of disrepair. And Penny wanted to 
basically carry on what T chances were doing. So the idea was that the building, the activities would relocate and we'd get another venue. So Tottenham Chances and the TWSI would move to another venue sometime in the future. This never happened because the agreement was broken. So basically what happened was they'd broken into the building and they stole this bit of paper, which was an agreement that there'd be a down payment so we could relocate the activities. And then they put it on the internet as though we're selling the building. And because we're trustees, we can't really respond. We can only sit back and basically wait for the backlash, which is what happened with these people. They just kept on and on and on. It was relentless. It was like the Saul Alinsky rules for radicals. It was incredible what actually happened. And then it's, it takes on an even more sinister turn because they then take over the building and they start a new organisation called New Chances and they invite the trustees along to explain themselves. So basically they libel us, call us all criminals and then they've invited us along to a meeting. And then when we didn't turn up because it's too dangerous to go in there, they said we didn't attend. So, so he, this, the cheek of this is unbelievable. And what they've done is they've got private information which they should not have access to. So we don't know who's behind these people because they have access to information that they should not have. They should not have access to this information. They've got private information that is not even on the Charity Commission website. So... There's, there's something bigger behind this and that's why I think it's very important to get this out now because it's a culmination of all the things I've been talking about and it's an exaggeration to the point where you think this is unbelievable. Nobody would believe this could happen, that anybody could take over an existing organisation and basically bully people out on the back of absolute lies and just two of them. Two well-funded subversives have done this. So, <laughs> get this. This was the 29th of March, 2018. They say, Dear Trustees of the Tottenham War Services Institute, we hereby invite you to a public meeting. Well, that's good of them, isn't it? Called by the volunteers of the New Chances Management Committee, which is working to keep the doors of our community... Oh, it's theirs again, you see. It's their community centre. Now, a very important point here is it's not a community centre. It, no, it gets no funding from the council. So it's not a community centre. Basically, it's a venue, and the venue is part of the trust. The trust fulfils its charitable purposes by allowing people to use it. It doesn't mean that anybody can walk through the door and go, this is mine, like these entitled people have done. So let's, let's, let's have a look at this. So this was on Saturday 14th of April. They've invited, they've broken into the building, they've stolen the building, and then they've invited us in to give our side of the story. That's good of them, isn't it? So the purpose of this meeting is to discuss with you the state of the Tottenham War Services Institute and its management. Right, so they, they go on about bills, waste disposal, false statements about particular service use, so they make a load of stuff up. Then they, they, they add a load of other stuff in, like racial discrimination um, and how, how we're not fulfilling our side of our promise or what we're meant to do. And then assault, so they're, they're accusing us of assault and gas theft and stuff like this and because the gas meter downstairs was vandalised, it had to be switched off and then what these people have done is they've taken over the bills and then put them in our name again. That was good of them as well, wasn't it? So basically, they've sent all this to us and then they say, well, you didn't turn up at the meeting. So we've now got a situation where the building has been absolutely looted, smashed up, they've, they've, they've stolen all the alcohol, um, the chair of trustees has had to leave the area, and we're going to hear from her in a minute, 
and what she's got to say because Penny Potter's got a public statement. Now, this has been going on for 18 months, everybody, and it's been going on since I was dealing with Kent Police about the crime farming. So I had two of these things to deal with at the same time. And what I can say about this kind of attack is that they do not let up the pressure. They have a strategy to keep you in a state of constant stress and harassment, which is what they've tried to do to Penny, because Penny's health was not good anyway, and she's been absolutely traumatised by this, and I've never seen anything like it. So what we're going to do before the break is I'm just going to play what Penny's got to say. This is a statement from Penny. We had a chat earlier on today. Well, from the very beginning, it could be a book or a story from 2004 when all this started. But the main trouble started about 2016 when we had, we'd won the building back in the trust name in 2015. And it was time for me to sort of pull away. I had heart problems and, and the medical problems to start, you know, giving another chance for some people to run the building and take it to the next step. Um, we, we, there was a lady called Lucy Benyon that asked me, can I employ her husband? Well, not employ him, her husband was a community thing. He was a, uh, uh, they just got married and he needed some time. So I said, that's not a problem. And he came into the building and I was going to offer them to do the theatre. Um, so they started forming committees and doing a bit of painting and decorating. And I said to them, if they wanted to form a social enterprise, they can come together and then we could look at uh, maybe talking to the trust or giving them over the chance to be the management that runs the building. Um, they told me, no, they didn't want to form a social enterprise. They didn't trust being a social enterprise. They wanted to form committees, which I said would not fulfil the objectives of the trust and said no to. They then said that they can do whatever they want because it's community building, which I informed them it wasn't. So to cut a long story short, they were asked to leave. After that, we, tried, we, we brought in new management. As we were bringing new management, they were attacked by a few of the in, individuals, the famous five, I shall call them, until the police do the investigation. Um, the people were attacked over the evening. This, this is carried on for six or seven months. They formed leaflets, they formed websites, they attacked us on every level. We still kept the building open and carried on. Their main access was that we had sold the building and run off with the money or was intending to sell the building, which was not true. We were working with developers because we had to get our land back. But it didn't mean to say that the building would be sold. It would all hinge on whether the people are not allowed it to be a planning permission on it, which I didn't think would go ahead anyway, because it was a great spot, T Chances, as a, as a great venue for people to use. So we carried on, aim, uh, carried on, and they just kept, they just fly tip in the area. They were just doing everything in their power to keep the building shut, which culminated in the 29th of May uh, 2018 when they broke in the building and took it over. You can tell me that it's come to the point where we're under physical attack and people now are visiting our home addresses and threatening violence towards their families, including a three-year-old child. Yeah, this yes. has really escalated in the past mm -hmm. week, which is why it's had to go out publicly mm -hmm. now. We were going to put it out publicly and get the whole story about, about but there's been a bit of a sense of urgency because of what's happened, so we, we're putting mm -hmm. it out now, that's right, yeah. Well, the, the thing is, the lies, the lies they've been telling uh, and the, the fact is they took the building on the 29th, we've got to come back and get our building back. We did attempt to get into the building last Monday with a new management so the building could stay open for the community, i.e. mummers and papas and a few of the things that we've actually told them they did, that was part of ours before. In fact, most of the stuff that is come into it was stuff that we planned to put into it anyway. Mummers and papas have been in the building for the last two years. They didn't just come into the building. They was always made to feel welcome and a promise was made by me they would never lose their building or would never lose a space where they could actually dance and, and, and become, become in socialist, go a socialist. There was never a problem. So I don't know, they've just been told lies. So a lot of the people that are actually listening to this stuff that they're putting out, it's complete bullshit, to tell you the truth. And there's nothing we can do because it's just lies. They can tell lies about anything. We have to tell the truth because we're legally binding. So anything that comes out from us has to be legally binding. And it's legally binding. We have not sold the building. The building was attacked. The building was taken over. And these subversives are still in the building claiming to pay the bills with the money that they're taking away. Well, that's what they would be doing if they were doing something. But there's no money coming over to the trust fund, so I don't know what's happening to the, the money that they're, they're claiming to fundraise for. There was nothing wrong with the building until they broke into it. There was licenses on the building and leases on the building. Everything was correct. Once they broke into it, it had to be rechecked. They refused to recheck the building and just carried on keeping it open. We don't know what state the place is, and we, only, we have to bring this statement out because there seems to be people thinking that it's T-chances that's running this venue, and it's not. 
these people are subversive. They've got no rights on the building and they've got no licenses or leases on the building to do this. It's illegal. Now, yes. the building is in trust. It's not a community building. It's a trust and it has to fulfill its objectives. Otherwise, we will be, we'll be, in, a, we'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Simple as that, really. The people who are legitimate use of the building have been kicked out as well and threatened. Yeah, yeah. They were told to pay. They were told if they didn't, couldn't pay money into a bank account or give them money, they have to leave. So the whole point with chances, chances was about giving people of no income or very little income to start up programs that would work with children or um, uh, uh, adults and, and, and elderly, and it was it was done through music. The people were given opportunities, and when they actually got themselves on their feet, the whole point is that they can go somewhere else and carry on till another person will come in to give them that opportunity. Some of these people wanted to hold on to that opportunity and not pay anything when they were taking loads of money. They were actually taking a very good wage at all, and they refused to give the trust anything. That's the reason why they, they, they got electric bills and they transferred it into the trust name instead of paying it themselves. Um, they, they damaged the building and then refused to leave when they was asked to leave. And they made a point that, that we're racist by chucking them out. <laughs> it's, you know, it's ridiculous. So the main thing is now it's, it's come to the point where they, they took the building over. They're pretending to be us. They're putting up screenshots as though they've been running the building for the last year. They've been in there since the 29th. Most of the community stuff that was in there, i.e. Mother, the mothers and puppers, has been shut out of the building. And the thing is, the school is holding on with the skin of its teeth because it's under attack most of the time. And this is where children upstairs on the top floor are vulnerable. And there's people downstairs smoking wacky backy and throwing tins on the floor and carrying on as though it doesn't matter. So how long the school can stay on? So we have to make some sort of um, agenda to... Uh, to get our building back, really, so it can go back into the hands of the trust to fill its objectives, which is the ex-service, the elderly ex-service, which is why mummies and papas are probably the ones left in there. How many more buildings they taking over? They have no right. They have no way of ever getting the building because the building is not in their hands. It's in trust law, and they can't take it. It's that simple. So whatever lies they're telling and what they're doing it for is behind us. The police, that will be the police investigation and the story will come out eventually, we hope. You know, that's all I can say, really. It's just that I'm just sitting in the background waiting for them to to be... I don't know why the police ain't doing their job, to say the truth. I'm just asking that question. Why? Why are the authorities not doing their job? How can you enter a building that was working and take it over? What happens to the local supermarket? What are they on the same on the corner? Take it over. Nick the stuff, sell the stuff and turn it into McDonald's. You know, you can do that, apparently. That's the law in this country now. It's lawless. You know, and then attack the people if they ever go near the place and then accuse the people of not going near the place and not doing their job properly. But if they do go near the place, we don't know what's going to happen. Every one of our trustees has been attacked verbally and physically. And in fact, that's why, you know, I know on the of Mark, you've been attacked on a very wide scale. It's just terrible, really. It's just terrible. But uh, I, you know, I tried to do my best. I built something. I put my own money into it. There's everything I've done, everything I've done to keep the building open. And they've just destroyed it. And it's heartbreaking. These people are doing nothing other than trying to claim that they run a building on the back of what we are. They've told themselves the Tottenham War Services Steering Committee, depending that the, the trust has got, or the charity gives them some, some sort of right. No rights at all. Totally legal. Formed bank accounts with the Tottenham War Services Steering Committee. Still, police doing nothing. No authority. And now they've formed new chances, which they've given no right to. These people, some of these people that took this building over were bought in as employees of the building and they had keys. So I think they just opened the door and just let themselves in. They had no rights. So beware. Your, your cleaner could take your building over because that's apparently that's what this law states. So the cleaner's got the keys and he comes into the building and he wants to turn it into something else. He can. Because that's what it seems to be. But it's cost us a lot of money just to get our building in back in our hands and we intend to open the building again for the right reason for the people of Tottenham and to fill their objectives. That's the way it would go. That's all I can say. I would say to I would say to mamas and papas, I made a promise to you guys about two years ago, um, Yvonne Curtis, I said you'll never lose this building. You would never lose your, your mamas and papas. And I made that promise and it seems to be that everyone's just accepted that I've sold the building was going to chuck them out. That was never done. I even spoke to Peter, who's running your bars, and said, if you can come back and talk to me, I will make him the license fee and we'll give him some sort of license and give him the opportunity, and you guys the opportunity to do exactly what you're trying to do. But you're not going to be dared to do it because these people will not allow you to do it. They will not allow you to do it. There's a hidden reason behind it. We don't know what it is, 
but the police will, they have, you have no right to steal a building. But the thing is, you will be looked after. The whole point is I made a promise to you guys. I made a promise to mummers uh, for the survivors' poetry. They've been removed from the building. They've been told if they come near the building or if they support me in any form or action, they will be beaten up. These people mentally ill. Yeah, I've been told by people that they've been told they've got to pay 50 quid to come in the building because they need to keep the building up to standard. By the look of the pictures, it looks like they've been whitewashing. They've told people they've put a floor down in the, in the bar. They didn't put that floor down. The bar, the floor was taken from upstairs where there was a dance school coming up to the children of the area. Um, we had a, a, a print shop that was working for young people. They were told to leave if they didn't pay this guy the money. These people you're working with are lawless and they have no qualms about attacking anyone if you do not agree with them. And in fact, that's what's happened to me. I'm actually standing up now because they were told me that if I do, they will come and take my family. But they won't stop. They want the trust. They want the land, so they can sell it to the developers, I think. But that's my only my fault, you know. It seems to be a reason. I think it's all in the police investigation now, and hopefully they come up come up with the right way and arrest these people, you know. It's anything I can say, but, there's, you know, you must be aware we're working on your behalf, not on their own. So I've been attacked on every level. They've 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 put this, this um, subversive stuff on emails. They've sent things to the press. Um, they've told lies about me. Anyone that knows me, I know I'm not racist. I don't try to do something good. I formed Tottenham Chances so that the investigation would be done by the trust to find out what happened to the land. That was achieved. Um, we brought together, built Tottenham Chances. It was a great place. What it's doing now, I don't know. Um, I've got problems with my heart and here well. And it accumulated where um, people were coming round to my son's house and threatening a three-year-old child and saying there's a £10,000 reward on his head. If I do not stop, if I try to enter the building again, I will be killed. And that's happened to all the trustees or anyone else that sticks up for the trust have been told the same thing. The police need to do their job now, really. And that's what we're going to We're leaving it in the police hands. So it's up to the police now to do their job because this is disgusting. And what we have to be aware of, that they've done this to a trust, how many more buildings they've taken over? They have no right. I was Penny Potter there from earlier on. And I suppose now that people can realise the seriousness of the situation... Um, we've been dealing with this for about 18 months, but what these people are doing is just traumatising the trustees into resigning, and none of us resigned. Well, we had a resignation, but the point is that the trust has kept going. Now, if I hadn't have known about these tactics... I would have been in shock with all this because I didn't think it was possible that this could happen and that the police wouldn't take any action. But because I knew about Saul Alinsky rules and the way that these people operate, I kind of knew the strategy. And what's interesting about it is the strategy is extremely limited. So what they will do is the same thing over and over again. So how many times can you be liable? Well, they can't keep libeling you. They can't just keep doing it. And it has to be the same ad hominem. It's a little bit like these extremist movements like Antifa. They have limited attack because they don't have a big political vocabulary. They have a very small vocabulary. And they have very, very limited tactics. Now, these limited tactics are just repeated and repeated and repeated and it does become boring and one of the Saul Alinsky rules is a drag is a drag. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over again but they do keep doing the same thing over and over again. They just keep doing it and they've set up these change.org petitions and change.org, I've got onto them that these petitions are inciting hatred, they're fraudulent, they haven't taken any of them down, they don't do anything and I've found that with some of these organizations like i was saying earlier on you you'll approach them and they don't seem to care that what they're printing isn't true they just think it's some kind of big crusade so it's it's all a bit frustrating but what is behind this is something else and that something else is the something else we talk about all the time it's part of a bigger picture of what's going on in this country and all over the world this is a corporate takeover so it doesn't matter how these people dress up what they're doing and how and, and they put a half a dozen subversives in front of them 
who are meant to look like squatters or they're meant to look like some kind of political group it doesn't work because we've seen through it we know what the tactics are the tactics are extremely limited and these people have come through an education system that is extremely limited they are basically the sort of people who've been to oxford and cambridge university and they think they're clever they're the useful idiots of the future so these people cannot do anything for themselves the ones who've taken the building over, I doubt they've ever had a job in their lives. They've never done anything. They've never helped anybody. So they're entitled, middle-class, spoilt children approaching 40 years of age. And that's really what the problem is. These people have been spoiled. They are entitled. And they don't see why they should stop doing what they're doing. And they don't seem to know that it's wrong. So that's really the only conclusion I can draw from what's happened so far is that these people who have destroyed basically this venue, which was working brilliantly, are working for somebody else because there's no way that they would have gone to these lengths just to, just to start up their own community centre. There's plenty of places they could go for that. There's plenty of empty buildings. There's actually plenty of funding available. So really what Penny was saying there is absolutely true. We're going to take a short break now. I've had a couple of little technical problems this hour, but I think things are getting back on track. And we'll have a little bit maybe of, let's have a look. Mm, yes, let's have a little bit of Ian Hound Dog Terry. And I'll be back in about five minutes. Float in my magical dam Don't mess with the dark side Stay clear from the dark side of town Don't mess with the dark side Stay clear with the fooling around Oh baby Don't slip around
went to the river to jump in. Baby turned up, she said, I told you when, well, I'm so down. I'm almost level with the ground. Well, I feel like this, my baby can be found. Love you, baby, with my heart and soul. A love like ours will never grow old. In the evening, back in the nighttime too. Oh, when you spend my money, get so mad with you. Well, I'm tore down. I'm almost level with the ground. Well, I feel like this. My baby can be found. Time too, but when you spend my money, I get mad with you. Well, I'm so down. I'm almost level with the ground. But I feel like this when my baby can be found. What a time, what a business. Welcome back to Windows on the World. That was Ian Hound Dog Terry. And great stuff. I love rockabilly. I love rock and roll. And that was what we used to have at the venue. And hopefully it will happen again. I'm talking, of course, about Tea Chances, which is at the moment in the hands of people who are subversives, shall we say. And interestingly, just before the break i was looking at some of the slander that's been put against me and they even set up get this they even set up a fake wikipedia page and they put deleted wiki page <laughs> so they put down all these things that i'd done like been on david ike's tv and then they said that i was filming at um t chances and they they put like a little and then they they basically said <laughs> that i've um signed a document for a terms of sale and then they go on about some of this some of the things that i'm meant to have said and what some people who listen to the show will find funny they've got three of windows on the world programs focus on the anti-racist charity hope not hate who he calls a fascist and terrorist organisation. Well, yes, they are, and they're a charity. See the videos, Fascist UK Hope Not Hate. Well, they've, done, they've actually done a little bio of me here, and then they go on to have a go at Gilad Atzmon, and they say he appears to make a statement supporting national sh socialism. Watch from minute 24. <laughs> so they've been through our shows in some detail well you think that they'd learn about what was going on from our shows because all this they have to do is research it and 
they he said they carry on to say that Piers Corbyn's regular on on Windows show and they were both recently denied a speaking platform at the 2017 Green Gathering. Um, and they, they state that Mark's views clearly lack academic rigour and appropriate education. Well, we dealt with all that. We've dealt with the Green Gathering and we deal with this suppression of what used to be known as free speech every day. So, yeah, they did a little Wikipedia page for me there. And um, we'd say it's, some of it's fairly accurate, I suppose. But really... This has been going on for 18 months and it's a bit of a relief actually to talk about it now. But this is the arrogance of this guy, Justin Katko. He's named in the actual article on Windows on the World, which has been doing the rounds. So I think people are getting the picture of what's been going on. But this was to uh, a witness statement. One of the people, well the last remaining person who was in the basement of T chances and he said I attempted to arrange a meeting with Justin to explain our aims of our project but after pointing out that the terms of my tenancy wouldn't allow him to meet me inside the building um, he wouldn't do it I was also accused of being a fascist now this is <laughs> this is the thing right I mean I'm a fascist youtuber by the way I'm a racist and the, we'll get to that in a minute because that, that, that has an amusing side to it. There is, there is some amusement about all this. See, but hey, he carries on. I was also accused of being a fascist. <laughs> yes, we all get accused of that by him. And warned that they planned to occupy the building. Yeah, they, they, told, they told people that they were going to take it over. And unless I removed all my equipment... Remember, this is a person who's legitimately renting the place. I also warned that... M and his girlfriend were in physical danger. I was warned that, basically, that my friend and his girlfriend were in physical danger and unless I removed all my equipment, it would be taken by travellers and sold for scrap. So this is the calibre of the people who are calling themselves new chances. These are the people who are calling themselves the Tottenham War Services Institute Steering Committee. So, it carries on. I became aware of two people measuring the windows outside. Now, they boarded up the windows and discussing. they were discussing boarding up the building. I then realised the threats to occupy the building were real and imminent. I decided to stay overnight in the building to prevent them from doing so that evening. And around 1am, everyone seemed to disperse from outside the building. The following morning, I went across the road to the local police station to inform them of what I suspected, which is about 200 yards away. We're talking about 200 yards away from the nearest police station here on Tottenham High Road. I told the police what I suspected was going to happen and was told that there was nothing they could do but keep watch on the building and advised me to carry on staying there if possible. As if someone broke in while I was on the premises, they could then be arrested for burglary. Carries on. After a couple of weeks without hearing anything, I decided to visit the building and was granted entry via the ground floor. I discovered that the doors to the basement had been forced open and various items were missing, including the large screen television, all the music equipment, my large tool chest containing all my tools, as well as various other items, including a large roll of electrical cable and all the heaters. I was told by Justin Katko that I should consider myself lucky that all my equipment hadn't been taken and I should start contributing money towards the building. As I was in no position to protest, I pointed out that I would first have to pay to replace some of the tools and music equipment which did not belong to me. He agreed this was fair and emailed me his bank details, the bank details of the steering committee. So they've set up a bank account, a fraudulent bank account, and they're embezzling money of people who have a legal right to be in the building who they're kicking out. After a couple of weeks, during which time the basement was unsecured and items continued to go missing, I managed to find the money to secure the studio with metal gates and new doors and locks. At the end of March, I was summoned to the building. This is what they do. They summon you, you see, and they, they libel you, trash your name. Then they summon you to the building, which is completely unsafe, and they make threats against you. And if you don't turn up, then... They say you failed to turn up. So, uh, <laughs> at the end of March, yes, summoned to the building, 
I was told I needed to contribute money towards the upkeep of the building and to pay for security. Well, that's a protection racket then, isn't it? <laughs> I reluctantly agreed to pay £100 once I'd received my wages, my part-time job. After consulting with the trustees and explaining the difficult circumstances, we agreed I would attempt to uh, basically try and get some rent on the studio. This is unbelievable, right? This is, the, And this could happen to anybody. This is what I'm saying. This could happen to anybody who's got a small organisation out there a small charity we've heard about small businesses being taken over like this but i've never come across a hostile takeover on the level of this where people's lives are being threatened and basically they're saying that they're going to rise up an army if you don't resign from the trust now the thing is that as i said earlier that the only reason that I didn't resign was because I knew the tactics of these people. I knew how they'd been trained. They'd been trained in Saul Alinsky rules. They've been through university. They know nothing about politics. They have been fed an ideology which they believe. They are thoroughly entitled. They come from rich families and they virtue signal behind whoever they think is a minority. And that's the important thing. These people are the worst type of racists they are absolutely elitist and they love to hide behind anybody who they think might be a minority and that is the despicable and disgusting thing about them they are absolute parasites and i can say this now because we've gone through everything that we can possibly do and it really is up to the police now to take some action now this libel yes yeah mithrin saying your only option would be libel yes well in actual fact there are options open and what's happened and the catalogue of things that have happened are all recorded we have screenshots of everything that they've done we have all of the conspiratorial stuff that they've been doing that they've made themselves absolutely public and then they've actually left themselves wide open but we're not really talking about libel here at the moment because as you say Mithrin that is quite unaffordable it can be done but a while ago on this subject when I brought down Crime Stoppers, and we're going to get to that in a minute because this is important as well. When I emailed the Chair of Trustees of Crime Stoppers, Lord Ashcroft, and he took down the whole of Kent Crime Stoppers Most Wanted. You can see that on windowsontheworld.net because they were the Kent Police were abusing that website, basically. And we have to remember that glorified traffic wardens, PCSOs, can actually put people's pictures up there. And what can possibly go wrong? Well, it did go wrong. What happened was a man who two of these malicious PCSOs didn't like ended up on Crime Stoppers for a hit and run that he knew nothing about. And those two are now in prison. So the abuse of that site is something that should be taken very seriously. And of course on there now there's 10 pages. There was 48 pages before. So we've reduced crime nationally with one email, which is interesting. But that takes us on to liability and the liabilities of people in public office. He's the chair of trustees of Crime Stoppers. He had to act accordingly. We've been acting accordingly for 18 months by keeping a dignified silence. And these people know that we cannot really make public statements Things have been happening in the background where it's raised now to a level of severe criminality. So it has to be put out. And also, we have the information on these people who've been doing this to the trust. And getting back to the Crime Stoppers thing, that ties in to something we're going to talk about. Now, let's talk about the Charity Commission. Now, the Charity Commission is there basically for compliance. It's to make charities comply with regulation. 
Now what happened was these subversives threw loads of different controversies in from load to loads of different agencies including the charity commission now all of these things have to be answered so when they send something in if you're a trustee you have to answer it so they inundated the trust with these complaints requests and at first we had to comply with the request if someone asks you for the information about the trust or where this basically what the trust activities are meant to be and the constitution of it all the rest of it you have to respond so we did that and then they started to contact the council they tried to cause trouble there they've told every single body they went to the police they reported me to the police because i'd upset them now luckily uh the police in north london they have got quite a lot to do i think so they're not particularly interested in this kind of hearsay nonsense but when things were transferred fr from the met police borough commander to tottenham we had a meeting with them and it basically went into community police now the things escalated since then but i suppose we have to see every side of the story in that the police are very busy but the the sheer level of criminality that's gone on here and because it's a hostile takeover there is nothing really that you can do this is the very disturbing aspect to it in other words it's pretty lawless there's a, a situation going on here that is out of control so that takes us to the charity commission again and to the new chair of trustees of the charity commission and this is tina stowell or baroness of beeston which is some title that she's been given um i think she was promoted by david cameron and ironically she's also on the board of crime stoppers so i'm going to get to Tina Stowell and the phone call that I made to her parliamentary office after I'd sent her this email and I'll go down it's actually in the article the article is called small charities and venues under threat and it's on windows on the world.net and I'll read out what I sent to her and it's extremely detailed and it has everything she needed to know it was sent on the 29th of april to her parliamentary address so to the right honorable the baroness stowell of beeston chair of trustees charity commission dear madam as chair of trustees of the charity commission i wish to bring to your attention a matter which highlights some very disturbing issues i am aware of the charity commission being a regulatory body however I believe the following information is in the public interest and of special interest to you as chair of trustees. I became a trustee of a small charitable trust in London in 2017. I've been most impressed by the way the TWSI Tottenham War Services Institute was being run with a variety of events which catered for a wide variety of interests locally. It was like an old-fashioned local venue. Everyone was made to feel welcome. It hosted everything from rock bands to still life painting classes. In early 2017, the chair of trustees asked me to become a trustee. By April 2017, the trust started to be attacked by a group of subversives. It soon became clear they were trying to destroy the trust and take possession of the trust property for outside interests. This is a thing we keep bringing back. It's very important that, that these two are not about some kind of community. They are working with and for somebody because it's too relentless, absolutely relentless what they've been doing. So it started with two individuals who'd been offered full use of the building for their proposed activities but they soon indicated that they wanted to take over the trust documents were stolen from the office and posted on social media sites with misleading and untrue information about the chair of trustees this included inciting hatred and hatred and libel and stealing trust paperwork and manipulating it to discredit the trust now we've got to remember also that they've ransacked the office and they've stolen 
all of the trust documents. Everything to do with that trust has been stolen now. It's in the hands of these criminals. So they, they created a steering committee. I, I go into this, the stuff that we've already talked about, really. They produce leaflets containing trustees' personal details, emails, phone numbers, allegations of embezzlement distributed to those using the building. This is what they did. They stood outside the building, giving leaflets to everybody going in that we were a bunch of criminals. Now, they got the, they got the trustees' names from the Charity Commission, and this is where it's important, because when you're a trustee, you're pretty vulnerable, because you have to respond publicly, and you have to be named publicly. So there's, there's no privacy as a trustee. So these people can libel you all day long, and there's nothing you can do. And the Charity Commission should have taken our names off that website, but they never did. Now, with relentless harassment, um, and I stated to her, this Tina Stowell, the Chair of Trustees has had to move out of the area because of the death threats and fear of attacks and violence. Her son was also threatened and had to leave the area. The group sent countless allegations about the trust, and emails to the Charity Commission, implying the group had standing within the trust and the community. Again, they talk about their community, which doesn't exist. So in other words, a community is whatever you think it is. If you think you're a community, then you're a community. So the, the subversive criminals who took over the trust are a community. There's two of them, and they're a community, you see. And because they don't like our community, they'll take it over, because that's what their belief is so the situation escalated with the trustees being threatened that if they did not resign an army would rise in tottenham i put all this into the email the building had been attacked on many occasions all sorts of damage done all sorts of allegations mp david lammy was present and was a witness when this justin catco game came in and caused a load of trouble it actually escalated the barman tried to throw him out and then the barman got done for assault which i think has been dropped now but because the barman actually tried to get him out of the building, he was then done for assault. And people who've listened to our show last week on Wednesday will resonate with that, with what happened with Matt from Birmingham. So, the harassment and lies being sent to the Charity Commission continues, despite the police being in full possession of the relevant information, but having failed to act or investigate the numerous crimes and crime numbers, which is true. Um, basically, we went into action fraud, all the stuff that I've talked about so far. We have yet to assess the amount of property that's been stolen. It's been assessed at £16,000. We've granted a court order against them on the 9th of March after having been abused and defamed. Um, us, and so it gets into the reason I'm contacting you, Tina Stowell. The reason I'm contacting you is that as trustees, we have no redress whatsoever. I've reported the online libel and we've spent a year fighting this. I'm becoming aware that this is not an isolated case and it appears from research that subversives are being paid to destroy small independent charities and organisations. Now, we know this is true because at the beginning of the show, when I was contacted years ago about change agents coming into areas and starting community projects, which weren't part of the community. They had nothing to do with the community. So... I stated that we have the names and addresses of the ringleaders and a catalogue of evidence, all available and in the possession of the Met Police Commander and the Tottenham Police. The serious crimes of the ringleaders were all logged with crime numbers and officers have been allocated, yet all these investigations have been closed without any resolution. And this was the point. When we went to the police with these things, we were told that these had been resolved or they hadn't been able to get hold of the Chair of Trustees or another excuse was given. So all of the allegations that we'd made and all the crime reports which came from people from the local council who were included in this were all ignored. So this guy who's come in with this woman, the two of them, these subversives, they seem to be operating above the law. And that's the disturbing thing. But now it's escalated to this point, maybe something will be done. But yeah, I've, I've told them about them going to Woodgreen Police, making false accusations about me and saying they continue to libel trustees. They've set up yet another petition at change.org stating the trustees are corrupt and they're legitimately using our name and they have standing. They're, they're basically, it's off the charts how arrogant these people are. The group have even stated that the chair has given them permission to use the building. Now, this was another thing. So, so they're going around telling everybody that they've got permission from us to use the building. So they kick us out of the building or they kick the trustees out so they can't go anywhere near it. And then they say, 
they've got permission and they're taking it over. And I said the trustees have made counter complaint about continuing harassment and they're wasting police time. The officers involved also stated that the 2017 crime numbers regarding the investigation into the main organiser of the group had been resolved. Not the case, as I said. So basically, we gave them the list of the crime numbers. I said the matter was passed from the Met Police Commander to Tottenham Police, despite meeting with Tottenham Police, and they've been in full possession of facts and less than 200 yards away from the trust property. They've failed to act at all. Now, things may be escalated a bit so maybe they will act the trustees are harassed and intimidated to go anywhere near the building and i sent her the emails to the met police commander you can see the email on there and there's basically it's it finishes with something penny says which i don't need to reiterate and penny goes into her problems uh, her health problems and basically says if she dies then it's manslaughter basically that's what she's saying because it's the stress of it all that's really made her health much worse and i and i can testify to that that's absolutely true she's phoned me up on, on occasions where she's absolutely distraught with what's going on and penny's been in this business a long time and she's a very strong person but when you get this kind of psychological battle going on where something is this unjust it's very hard to actually process it because it's so wrong you couldn't actually make it up however let's get back to this so nothing i did not get a response from tina stowell now tina stowell has just become the chair of trustees of the charity commission and there were many mps many people who were very concerned that she didn't have the correct experience she had no experience in the charity sector and they were stating that she wasn't fit to have the job which is very interesting. So she's been promoted to a post and she's just basically sitting there with a the title. So here are the phone calls I made to Parliament. One was before um, and one was after. So let's have the one that we made just before the last email, which I'm going to read out. Yeah, I sent an email regarding a charity two days ago and haven't had a response um, <clears throat> not even an acknowledgement of the email it's extremely important and it's about charities in this country being attacked and shut down and I do require a response she's now chair of trustees of the charity commission and it's a very important issue and it also ties in to other interests that she has so I would like her to respond to it it came the other day so I just wondered if you could take down a message that it's Mark Lee from the TWSI charity, Tottenham War Services Institute. Uh, Mark. Yes, it is. Yes, it went to um, it went to the Parliament address. Stowell T yeah. at Parliament.uk. Okay, yeah, that's one of the methods that I'll be sending this fire as well. Right. Okay, yeah, if you can get her to contact us, that would be great because this is a very serious issue. I will send this over straight away for you, Mark. Okay. Oh, thanks a lot. That's great. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Join me, Mark Windows, for Windows on the So here now is the... Every Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT. Check out our archive... And so here now is the second call coming up. Tessa Stowell on the 29th of April. I sent her a, an email about something very important about a small charity that's been devastated and attacked. And the email was never answered. I then followed up the phone call and she's failed to respond to that as well. Um, I just wanted to leave a message that I will be putting into the public domain that she's failed to respond and that I'm going to suggest that she resigns as Chair of Trustees from the Charity Commission. So if you can pass that over, I'd be very grateful. OK. Um, I wouldn't be able to pass it over today because it's not a sitting day at the House, so we don't have any sort of doorkeepers who normally take the messages to send it through to. Oh, I see. Um, That's okay. I can email her anyway. It's going. It's going okay. to press. It'll be in press by Monday anyway. 
if you can email her, that'd be great, sir. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. So those are the two messages that I left for her. I'd already sent her this email, which is very distressing if you read it. It's on the website. And the fact that she hasn't got back to me, I think, is pretty despicable. She's the chair of trustees. And ironically, she's on the board of Crime Stoppers. And the chair of trustees of Crime Stoppers acted straight away when I sent him information. And he acted honourably. And he's also been promoting her. So maybe Lord Ashcroft should have a word with Tina Stowell about what her public duties are. Because... A chair of trustees is a key public position. You don't just sit on it to get invited to dinner parties. You don't just sit on it to virtue signal and to hide behind the fact that you're doing something useful or you appear to be. You actually do something useful. So I'm not very happy with her at all because... The situation that I brought to her was so alarming that I, if I'd have seen that, and she has seen it, because she was left my phone number and she was alerted to that email by that first phone call. That man told me that. In fact, he was quite concerned himself. He was acting honourably. So, on the 18th of May, 2018, I sent this to Tina Stowell. I'm not using a title anymore. I didn't call her Baroness of Beeston. I just called her Tina Stowell. Chair of Trustees, Charity Commission. Dear Miss Stowell, I sent the following information about an alarming attack on a small charity on the 29th of April. I have not even had the courtesy of an acknowledgement. I called Parliament two days later and left a message which you would have received along with my phone number. It was passed on to her. The person who took the message was well aware of the urgency of the matter and it was passed to you. The matter was, and still is, extremely urgent and has escalated considerably since you failed to respond. Myself and many others are absolutely fed up with people sitting on boards of public bodies who neglect their public duty and are there to fill a title. It is noted that you are also on the board of Crime Stoppers. I recently had over 500 people removed from this charity website as individuals within the police were found to be abusing the site. The Kent Police took down their entire most wanted gallery and the national database is now down to nine pages from around 40. My information was acted upon very swiftly by Lord Ashcroft last November. In fact, he was the only person out of the whole organisation except for Dominic O'Reilly to respond honourably. Mr O'Reilly has since resigned. The Charity Commission is no longer fit for purpose. As Chair of Trustees, you have failed in this case to honour your public duty, and I will be asking for your resignation as Chair. Signed, me. So, that's the situation we're in. That, even when you go to the body which is there to represent you, they won't do a damn thing. And we have had to comply with the Charity Commission. We have ha When we were first attacked... I put out a statement to the people who were using the building because there was people outside the building giving the people who used the building, the beneficiaries of the trust, leaflets, part of which I read out earlier on, stating that we were corrupt, that we'd stolen money, that we were racist, all this sort of stuff. And it's absolutely dreadful. So basically, at least just put in, we're all doomed. Well, we're not necessarily doomed because... A lot of the stuff that we've done, <laughs> it's had an effect. So, the the thing about this particular situation is it brings up the role of public trustee and what it's all about. So, we've upheld our roles as public trustees. We upheld our roles to the Charity Commission. Um, the Charity Commission have been asking very pernickety questions about small amounts of money. Now get this. They've even made an issue. Out of £6. Going to Netflix. Which, which was paid for by someone in the building. For something that happened in the building. And. There's several 
things that they asked, which we've, we've responded to everything with a detail letter. But the point is that this charity has been under attack for 18 months. They've been traumatising Penny Potter, the chair of trustees. She's had to leave her home in Tottenham. She's had to flee the area. Her son was part of all this as well. And his activities in the area have had to stop and he's had to has to get out of the area as well. So, in other words, these bodies are worried about very, very small things. And let's look at the bigger picture of charities. So we've got charities that we know are not acting in a charitable way at all. We've got charities that are making money for themselves. We won't go into them tonight, but most people who listen to this will know who I'm talking about. We've got charities that attack British citizens who are out there giving their version of the truth. We've got charities that are basically money laundering. But more than that, when these regulatory bodies are put on the spot like this, I think it's now time for people to take action because I would encourage people to contact Tina Stowell and just to see if she responds to them because I find the lack of response to what's gone on there absolutely unforgivable in these circumstances because... That's a really serious matter. The, the, the actual things that went on there were so serious that I didn't even think it was possible. I know I keep reiterating this, but it's been a very shocking thing that's happened. And basically what they've done to somebody else, because it's, it's absolutely cowardly. And it's what you could say, it's, it's, a, kind of, it's a kind of black magic, really. If you look at all this stuff, it comes down to targeting and basically traumatising people. And these people know what they're doing, you know. So, I find that the situation we're in is a difficult one. However, what I would say is that because we've had experience before dealing with stuff then there is actually a solution and I think we're getting close to a solution but in the meantime the building is still in the hands of these subversives nobody knows what's going to happen but the trust is still there and their idea was to destroy the trust and steal the building well they can't destroy the trust and even when we're in court with these people this Justin Catco he thinks he's extremely clever. He was educated at Cambridge University, suffers from extraordinarily high esteem, and he spent all of his life being a student. And when it comes down to it, their arrogance is what trips them up because they don't have access to common sense or even knowledge. So legally, they're a bit clueless and which would explain why they think they can take over somebody else's charity by just using the name. And that's really what's happened. So that's the story of what's happened to this small venue in North London. And I would like people up and down the country to get in touch if they have any information about this sort of thing happening. I was contacted a while ago about a small charity this happened to up north but there must be more and having looked into this and having looked at the way the whole community organizers thing works within areas in other words the narrative is taken over and controlled locally and these change agents are put in so i suppose the solution to it is to know how it works and then act accordingly which is what we've tried to do so i'm now going to move on to some more information which ties into that because we've we've got to nearly the end of this and 
we've we've gone through the witness statements, the the crimes. There was crime numbers. There was loads of crime numbers that we had, and it wasn't acted upon at all. So it's a bit of a problem that we've got this lawless situation going on, and I think the police know it. The police are very very overstretched and. They are reluctant to come out to anything, really. But on the other hand, they seem to be okay at crime farming. We did a show on crime farming last Wednesday. It was, it was actually a follow-up to the show that we did about my interactions with Kent Police, with this case that still hasn't been resolved yet. And there was this fellow that contacted me called Matt from Birmingham. And he was working for a charity, ironically, a big charity in Kent. And he got assaulted he got beaten up and because he defended himself he ended up as a defendant and he ended up getting found guilty in a crown court but you can hear that um it's the last show we did on windows on the world crime farming it's all there so over the past 18 months that's what's been happening in the background and we're going to do more and more on this because i think it's probably a great example of everything that we've been talking about over the last few years. Oh, Unique Lee's saying here, I'm surprised local police officers are not sponsored by McDonald's, Nike and any revenue generating method to make you your company profitable. Well, in actual fact, most of them are private in some way or other. If you look at the infrastructure of the Metropolitan Police it's run by Kellogg, Brown and Root which is guess what Halliburton <laughs> so you've got the military industrial complex running the police um, the infrastructure of the Metropolitan Police and then of course you've got British Transport Police who are a private company based in the city of London and in 2015 it was announced that they wouldn't need uniforms anymore Exactly, M Mithrin, yes. G4S have already bought some. Yes, we know all about them. Yeah, well, interestingly, and I haven't got time to get onto it tonight, but Serco is something that everyone should look into because they're into everything. It's a bit like what we've been saying about all these organisations like ESRI, in partnership with Crime Stoppers, data mapping firms. Now, Serco run everything. They're into prisons. They're into enforcement. They're into stuff behind the scenes. It's incredible when you look at that organisation. And I was going to bring some of that up, but I don't think, as I say, I don't think I've actually got time. But we've gone through most of what we had to say about that. And I think that, in conclusion, what I'd like to say is get in touch, basically. Get in touch if there's anything that is going on locally because that's the great thing about the show i think we're getting more and more people all over the country are sending stuff in and and that to me is what it's all about because when we got that thing taken down the other week that grindbusters website that's a victory because these councils will keep pushing and pushing and pushing as much as they can they won't stop and to be able to just go in there with a little bit of knowledge and get them to respond accordingly is very good. Let's see if we can do it on a bigger scale though because this is the problem and I'm finding that getting the message out is the main thing because it is encouraging. There are people out there doing stuff. There are people sending me stuff. Now next week I'm going to go into some of the stuff that's been sent in because it's brilliant and I have correspondents all over the world now who are sending me the most amazing information. I don't want to mix it up too, night, to, too much tonight on this. But even with what I've been talking about with the issues about this charity, there are people who have been giving me information in the background as to what is actually going on. And... It's everything that Windows on the World talks about. So basically, you've got these... It's just There's just a, a massive network of these people. Now, sometimes it's hard to, to work out how they actually fit in. But once you know the template 
and look at Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals and look at the the way that people are trained I mean I know we people talk about common purpose but this is massive it goes into a huge area it goes into the public and the private sector it's much bigger than people think so I think that as as we as long they keep their aims fairly narrow it's like a lot of these organizations get taken over and that's how they get infiltrated and that's a big part of this infiltration is a massive part of it and when i realized how a lot of this stuff worked i i learned a lot from the occupy movement and how that was taken over with general assemblies because that is actually the template for how all of this community organizing works the Delphi technique with Fasungas out and about gets this over to the public who come and see it about how this works because if you tie it into the bigger picture things like climate change and all the rest of it and how that's being manipulated and of course all of these useful idiots believe all of this globalist stuff so you get these extreme liberals or extreme left far left basically i don't even know what you'd call it because the old-fashioned left is now the new right if you look at the way they respond i mean the people from the old-fashioned labor party are absolutely appalled by what's going on in the name of the so-called left so we are in the post-truth world but the mere fact that we have people like piers corbyn on his brother jeremy is obviously part of the old left then these people now are becoming rebellious in the eyes of the sort of Blairite factions that have taken over the Labour Party. So everything is post-truth. But one thing is very, very clear. The way that this stuff works is absolutely simple. And it's absolutely easy to bust it. And once that template's busted, then you know about it. And the great thing is, if there's anything to learn about what's happened here tonight, and it's happened over the past 18 months, it's this, is that these people have incredibly limited tactics their tactics are so limited they have no imagination they cannot think out of the box they think inside the box all the time and i remember years ago when i was talking to david shaler about this when we were at the people's voice because we'd been having a lot of problem with attacks there and infiltration nothing like what's happened with this charity over the past year by the way it's all minor stuff it's all minor ad hominem it's not actually putting your life in danger but it's about undermining and what we were talking about on this show you can see it's um infiltration special i think it was called or infiltration extra something like that a lot of the old people's voice stuff has been taken down now which is a shame because there were some good shows there but i've still got them and we might upload them again at some point but this one was basically about that and the conclusion that was reached is that these people mainly who are involved in subversion they work in hierarchical structures so they can't think outside the box so it has to be to a template so what's interesting is that they can't use things like humor and humor is really powerful it's one of the most powerful things you can actually use against them because that's what we're going to be using in the months ahead and i've got several ideas about how to do this because it's a very very powerful thing if you ridicule these people they cannot come back with anything because they're incredibly egotistical incredibly serious and they're very controlled very mind controlled and very controlled within the paradigm of what they actually have to do so that is a very very important part of the strategy is keeping humor going and that i think is probably going to be one of the things which will give us a bit of fun if we can have any fun out of this over the next few weeks but what we've discovered over the past 18 months not just with the police but with the way these change agents are coming in totally lawlessly has been quite revealing and i'm fairly glad that i was prepared for it because having studied some of this stuff it's really really helped so in other words doing things like say taking the council to court or have a go at these public officials i mean do it properly and do it politely and do it firmly and see what happens because i was pretty amazed 
the way things moved behind the scenes. And this is the important thing. A lot of these very high up public officials can never acknowledge that anything's actually happened. They will not do that because it it upsets the status quo in the eyes of the public. And remember that the public have everything on a need to know basis. Most things the public do not know because everything is on a need to know basis and they don't need to know it. It's like when the judge says that something's not in the public interest. What he means is it's not in the public's interest for the public to know about it because it would destabilize society. So when you think about it, these aren't massive concepts. They're quite simple. And when you're up against subversion, the only thing that can actually win is the truth. And I think, if anything, that's what this show tonight has proved. That when you hear Penny Potter talking about what's happened to her, well, you know that that woman's telling the truth. There's nothing to hide. When I went into that venue, I'd never been anywhere like that for years. I felt like I was at home because I was made to feel at home. And if anyone shows that kind of um shows any that kind of um kindness then i actually find it very very heartwarming that people are like that and, and there are people like that in the world so basically the the thing is that these people don't like truth they hate truth they absolutely detest the truth and if you hit them back with the truth then that has to be the main weapon of attack. So I'm going to sign off in a bit from this show. And next week, I'm going to go into some of the things that have been sent into me over the past few weeks, which are incredible. I've been getting some incredible information and I don't want to mix the information up too much. So I want to keep it fairly simple this week and just concentrate on that. But I'll let everybody know out there if this Tina Stahl does come back to me, but I am actually publicly asking for her resignation because if she's chair of trustees, then why isn't she responding? Our chair of trustees has to respond to criminals, to people who are openly attacking her, who were undermining everything that she'd worked for. And she still responded to their requests because she's the chair of trustees. As a trustee, that is your duty. So I've brought something incredibly important to Tina Stowell of the Charity Commission about what's happening to small charities in this country and she's chosen to ignore it. She's chosen to ignore it. So that tells you a lot. And what we need to do, in my opinion, is get rid of these virtue signalling people who want to be there to uphold a title. Well, a title is more than just your name on a piece of paper. You're a public trustee. So think about what your duty is to the public. And I will be reminding her of that. And I'm not going to let this go because I think it's an important issue. And that is the main thing that these people, they don't want to be called to account. They just do not want to have to be called to any type of account. They want to sit there, sit back, go to their special events, be seen to be seen, get into magazines and basically be media they want to be the media and you see this with mps i mean the worst mps are the ones that are on twitter all the time and we know who they are the ones who are on twitter all the time promoting one kind of narrow ideology you know that they're not doing anything for their constituents so it's kind of revealing so the more the more these people are um, in the public eye and on social media then the more you have to be wary of them. But it's been quite a good show tonight. I've, I'm kind of enjoying this now. I'm, I'm, I'm still having trouble with the chat box sometimes, but I think people are in there. And I think people are still in the chat box. I'm just going to check, check it before I sign off here. And yes, I think Mithrin's talking about something else. <laughs> He's talking about the, the DWP. But we're going to be back here next Sunday and watch out for things during the week as well because I've got some interviews that I haven't put up that I want to put up and like the one we did on the crime farming 
midweek. So if you're around Wednesday, I'll definitely advertise it. I might be putting a show up on Wednesday. There'll be an interview that Windows on the World has done that we haven't put out yet because I've got stuff in the background that I want to get out there. And keep your eye on the live stream and subscribe to us on Spreaker. Hello to everyone at Mad Wasp Radio, by the way. D got in touch with me earlier on. And I hope you enjoyed the show there. And hopefully, sooner rather than later, we'll see you all again at the venue that we've been talking about. So that's it from Windows on the World. And do tune in every Sunday. Tell your friends about it because it's very important that we get this information out. And I'm very glad that people are giving me so much information. That they're, they're giving me lots of information. So I uh, really appreciate everybody that has sent information in. Here we are. I'm just looking for, <laughs> because I was reading off this, I'm looking at all this different stuff I've got in my inbox here, and I lost my actual broadcaster. I found the broadcaster again now. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much, everybody. And we'll see you on the Windows on the World next Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m.